Well, I'm an artist who, for a long time, has worked through the medium of photography. And the reason I started doing that initially was having made sculpture, which one might describe as site-specific in nature. The need to document what I'd done, because it was transient, was even more pronounced than it might have been otherwise. Photography was a very efficient medium for doing that. And I became very interested in the problem of representing sculpture through a photograph and all the issues that were raised to do with representation. So I would say what I've done ever since has been one way or another to interest myself in representation itself as facilitated through photography as a medium. You know, I'm the kind of person who starts work by sitting, actually, quite literally, perhaps, where I'm sitting now, at a, at a table or, or at a desk, and I'm drafting out ideas using sketching, drawing, uh, use, using annotations, notes to myself. Even before I worked with photography, when I was making sculpture, I was doing uh, a kind of drawing or diagram of how I thought that sculpture would, would look, how I wanted it to look. So I, I, you know, I simply carried that forward into working with photography, and not least because I was making work which I wanted to fulfill a certain kind of function. So, so, so the objectives were always nameable, and, and as they were nameable, they, it was also possible to give them some visualisation as well, some pre-visualisation. Going right back to uh, student days, if I was doing something which was, in a sense, experimental, you know, trying something out, I needed to explain it to myself. And there were occasions when I needed to explain it to other people. I was required to explain it to other people. And I think thereafter, I just maintained that habit. I find writing very useful as a tool. You know, it's a way of articulating but also developing thought. So all of that precedes ever picking up a camera. And actually, also preceding even picking up the camera might be some other things. I mean, I might be preparing the circumstances in which these images are made. I might, might be building a set, buying props. I might be assigning roles to models who are going to appear in the picture. There's a lot of preparatory work. It's a little bit like, I think, uh, maybe preparing a shot for a film. So I, I am, you know, the wardrobe mistress, the props department, the lighting cameraman, uh, the director, the producer, you know, I'm doing the casting, all of that. It's a kind of miniaturised form of that, I think. There's a real paradox for me when I'm using models and sets and issuing directions and so on, because you, you then enter a world of pretense, of, of artifice, and in many respects, like many artists, I think, I'm very concerned with the real. You know, I'm, I'm concerned with the photograph as an object, for example, not just as a means to uh, another time, another place through this window of the photograph. And similarly, I'm interested in all the, the reality of photography's language of blurring, of negativity, of unfocusedness, of underexposure, all that kind of stuff. So in order to achieve my objectives, if on occasion I'm using actors' models, the, the theatre of it 
goes against the grain with me. And yet, uh, in order to do what I want to do, I find it a necessity. I don't think my work is uh, essentially intuitive or emotive at all. I think, uh, relatively speaking, I work very self-consciously, quite analytically, which isn't to say I know exactly what I'm doing and I know exactly what the outcome is going to be. I certainly have an intent to deal with particular ideas and I have an intent of a certain kind of outcome. I can never know the particulars of it. And that obviously is part of what makes it interesting. You know, you, you ask yourself a question, what happens if, what happens if I did this? I haven't tried that before. I haven't seen anybody else try it before, perhaps. I don't know if it's gonna work. But actually, it always does seem to work, fortunately. But in the process, things happen which you can't possibly predict. So relative to perhaps some other artists, there is a lot of prediction in what I do. But, it, but it's limited. One thing that is very commonly put in conjunction with a picture is a caption or a title, which is calculated to, to prod the viewer in a particular direction, to have a certain understanding of how I want this work to be positioned, how I want it to be perceived. So it's a manipulative device, I think. You know, I think in terms of authorship and in, and in terms of ownership, you know, intellectual property rights, etc. As far as I'm concerned, you know, once once I've completed a piece of work and I've and I've given an identity to it and it is identified with me, then that's something that is simply retained indefinitely. You know, even even after I'm dead, you know, that that connection is made. If I choose to destroy something, uh, the likelihood is that, at the very least, there is some form of documentation of that work. So, so whether or not I've decided to get rid of it, um, there'll be a kind of aura still around in, in some sense. I mean, there's probably still a means of referring to it. I'm very bad at retaining uh, written communications. I mean, I do have some. And over time, I've had correspondence with a variety of artists in the UK and outside of the UK. The kind of stuff that an archivist would probably find extremely interesting. And uh, I'm, you know, I would be a disappointment because a lot of it is no longer around. I mean, f f as a lot of that correspondence now is in the form of emails, I'm certainly not good at keeping emails. You know, I'm, my thought will be, who's interested? You, you know, the, the, their, their communications that have uh, a relevance when they're actually being made, I don't think of them as uh, communications that have, uh, you know, have purchase really beyond that point. You can imagine that when I first started exhibiting work through the medium of photography, the end of the 60s, it was by no means uh, a commonplace. You know, it's not that it was unheard of, but it was a very minority aspect of the whole spectrum of what was going on in the art world. Now, you, you, you could say, surely... You know, there's a long history of this. I mean, going right back to the inception of photography. I mean, basically the invention of artists, we should say, I think. You know, Fox Talbot, Nieps, Daguerre, you know, painters and printmakers. My point is that I, I would have reason to rail against the dismissal of photography as up, if only because of that well-established history of, of photography being part of 
the whole spectrum of art right from its inception. However, I, I could also understand the question. I could also understand why there might be a consideration that this is not art in the same way that, let's say, painting is. One of the real differences is to do with the hand. You know, pa all paintings display the trace of the hand. They're also full of accidents. They're also full of variation. Your photographs are very homogenous. And I think one of the reasons I've been so interested in the specific features of photography as a medium is to uh, come up with a kind of equivalent for what you might find in other areas like painting. So the, so the art of photography is embedded not in the brushstroke or the drawn line. You know, it's much more embedded in this area of unfocusedness or this or this blurring effect. Or you know, the kind of things that never occurred in other media until after photography was inven invented. And then you get painting, for example, copying the, these kind of devices. So it's, a, it's, it's, it's something I'm very interested in, and I'm always inhabiting an area which tries to make a negotiation between photography and a medium like painting. And it's something I do, and it's a kind of reference I'm often making in my work.